Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, we are going to discuss about the design coordinations in piping design. We can consider this video as a continuation of my previous video, which was titled saying the experts required for experienced piping design engineers. So essentially being an experienced, we must know certain things. And in that video, especially I have pointed out few of the points. And one of the point is to know about the workflow process. And in workflow process, one of the very essential segment of the workflow process is design coordinations. So design coordinations is nothing but to whom you should coordinate, what kind of input you should give and what kind of uh, input you should receive and when to give and when to receive. So these are the uh, very essential part of design coordination that we had to do in piping design. So I thought of giving you some brief about how and which discipline that you have to coordinate and for what. So this is a very important uh, part, I mean very important segment of piping design one should be aware about. So let's get started. So let's see what are the different disciplines we have. So one of the primary discipline is process and the second discipline is instrumentation. The third one is electrical team and the fourth one is civil and structural both are one team actually so though they are named as a civil and structural both are done by one particular set of engineers who are known to be specialized in both uh, civil and structural engineers okay and now we have the next one is technical safety technical safety are also known to be as the process safety engineers in many of the companies but uh, essentially both does the same job though the, the name of the team differs from organization to an organization but the essential roles of these teams are same actually. So they are known to be technical safety engineers and we have the last one as mechanical. So what in mechanical we have to coordinate? See first we have to understand in mechanical we have three disciplines. One is piping and the second one is static and the third one is rotary. So being a piping engineer we must have to coordinate with static and rotary because the process plan and the piping design involves static equipments and as well as rotary equipments. So these are the different disciplines that we have to coordinate with. Let me list down what are those. One is process, then this instrumentation and electrical, civil and structural, technical safety or process safety. And the last one is in mechanical we have to coordinate with static and rotary. So what all we have to coordinate uh, in process for what you have to coordinate what kind of information that you will be giving to them and what kind of information that uh, you will be receiving from process. So we cannot cover almost all the details but I will try to give you some glance about what kind of information that you have to check and what kind of information that you have to receive from them basically. So basically in process, uh, when you say process actually, you will receive a PNID which is one of the primary document for pri piping design. So what kind of input that you will give it to them? When you receive a PNID as a first document, you have to go through these documents. You have to identify whether you have received any inputs, your essential inputs such as line numbers and piping specifications and line sizing and what is whether you the line has insulation or not, whether the line has tracing or not. And if the line, I mean the different rating li rated lines are connected with different rated lines, whether the spec break has been given or not. So uh, there are different part of it actually. Basically, uh, what we have to do is that we have to review the PNID and we have to check whether the PNIDs are in line with the piping design. So most of the time what happens that, uh, let's say 150 rated lines uh, could have been uh, connected with 300 rated lines. So how these classifications are done? So one thing is that we have to show a spec break. If process has missed it, you have to mark it up and inform them. Then they would be able to update in their PNID. So this is how it happens. And you can also verify the line list. So when you verify the line list, you might have seen some insulation requirement. But in PNID, these insulation requirement might not have been captured. So basically, you have to check the available inputs and check whether the documents are authentic. Let's say you have considered, uh, you have found a line number which has a different pipe spec. Uh, um, I mean, uh, you have a line number which has a certain uh, pipe spec, but in line list, you found the pipe spec has so different than the PNID. So what do you have to do? 
you have to speak to the process engineer or you have to uh, give him as a comment so that he will be able to check from his end and to uh, if there is a change and he will incorporate. So basically we have to check whether uh, any discrepancies are there in the documents. So that once you give this as a comment to them they will be able to respond to your queries or if your query is really right and they will incorporate those comments in the PNID. So this is what you have to do in process actually. Then you have instrumentation. In instrumentation as a generic practice actually we have to coordinate with the instrumentation team for um, uh, the sizing of the instruments because there are lot many instruments are involved in piping design right. Uh, we have temperature indicator, pressure indicator and uh, we have flow transmitter, flow elements. There are different uh, uh, instruments are there. We do not know the sizing of these equipments. Initially, we consider these as uh, some uh, uh, preliminary uh, sizing, but uh, when you uh, complete, when you uh, go down the line at the end of the design, you may have to incorporate, you, have, you may have to uh, reflect all the final sizing actually. For this, you have to coordinate with instrumentation team. Basically, the control valve sizing and the actuator sizing, the dimensions of the control valves and the height of the uh, actuators, those things you have to coordinate with instrumentation. Then we have uh, the, the third discipline is electrical. So what we have to coordinate with electrical. Basically in instrumentation and electrical, if you see the major segment uh, of coordination is about the cable tray clashing. Because uh, in process plan we have to lay an underground piping and above ground piping. If you lay an underground piping, your underground piping should not clash with the cable trays of instrumentation and electricals. And as well as when you lay an above ground piping, you will put supports. These supports should not clash with the underground cable trays essentially and it should not have any interference uh, clash with your uh, above ground cable trays as well. So essentially when uh, instrumentation and uh, yeah, electrical, we have to coordinate to avoid the cable tray clashes both in underground and as well as in the above ground. And then we have the technical safety. So what does technical safety does? Technical safety uh, engineers are the team that they, they ensure that there is no hazard in the design. They will evaluate your piping design, they will evaluate the process design and they will recommend if there is any hazard and what are the remedies to uh, you have to bring uh, into your design so that you can eliminate the hazard. So they will go through the, the equipment placements and the design of your uh, piping design whether human factor engineering is considered or not the accessibility, operability. So they would evaluate and all the factors actually. So essentially you have to share your piping GAs and piping design. It could be a 3D model, it could be a piping layout or it could be of anything that can represent your piping design so that they can understand the particular area. So only then they will be able to see the uh, hazardous situations over there. And if they found anything uh, so hazardous, they would give you a recommendation to modify this and that and accordingly you can get into a discussion to sort it out and what kind of minimal modification that you can bring in order to achieve their requirements. So basically you have to uh, uh, qualify your design uh, in such a way that there is no hazard in your design. So that is what technical safety does. So basically you have to share your documents to them and uh, get it reviewed by, by them and uh, incorporate those comments please. And now uh, the last one is the mechanical. In mechanical as I said we have to coordinate with static and rotary. So static means and we know that statics are known to be the pressure vessels or equipments where uh, which does not have any rotating equipments. But the rotary elements, uh, rotary equipments are known to be like pump, uh, pumps and compressors and turbines those are considered to be a critical equipments. So what kind of coordination you have to do with them is one of the main coordination is that you need to know the sizing, you need to know the final design, final vendor confirmations of uh, let's say let's take a pump, let's take a compressor, you need to know the conceptual sizing right from the beginning. Then you have to know what is the finalized design and then you have to get the final GE, what is the nozzle rating of the pumps, what is the, what is the nozzle rating of the uh, associated piping of the compressors and turbines. So these are the requirements that you have to check with the mechanical static and rotary. As I said, I may not be able to cover all the uh, areas of the coordination because endless coordinations are required. So but uh, essentially these are the few important things that we have to consider. So I guess that this video will help you to understand what are the basic design coordinations you have to do in piping design. 
I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.